we are making space invaders, not snake invaders, and so I think it's high time that we learn how to replace some images. So, this can get rather complex because um, you do need to know a little bit about photo editing and uh, things like that to insert your own Im images into GreenFit. It's not very hard to do it, um, but you can run into issues with sizing and transparent backgrounds and all that kind of stuff. And so you could run into things that I'm not going to cover in this video series, but just keep in mind there are lots of tools you can use online to resize things, to remove backgrounds. Uh, remove.bg is an amazing website. That's remove.bg where you can remove backgrounds from things quite easily. Um, so I'm going to do some things here and hopefully it'll suit what you're doing. But if you do run into some problems, keep in mind uh, it could have to do with the pictures that you're, you're getting. So what I've done is I've got a picture of an alien. And what I want you to notice is the picture that I have here it's very important that what we call the bounding box is uh, right at the edges of the alien. We don't want the bounding box to be out here because that's going to create white space from the character. So in other words, the computer would interpret this picture as having some space from here to here. And then if like, so if I had, you know, something like that, the bullet would come up from the bottom and it would think it was hitting the enemy here instead of here. So we want to make sure that that enemy is cropped right on the boundaries of the picture, like so. I've already done it with this one, but I haven't done it with the ship. So, And I'm using a Mac, so again, things are going to be a little different for me. But here's my ship, and if I go select all, you can see that it's not 100% perfect. You can see there's a little bit of space around there, so I'm going to adjust that border. There's probably an even better way to do it using a better photo editing program, but this is just a quick way to to do it. And I'm going to say, okay, crop. And so now it crops it so that I only have, the picture is only that rectangle and there's no white space in there at all. And that should be good. So I have my pictures. The other thing you have to keep in mind is the pictures that you download, they have to be in the right place. So my folder, Space Invaders, this is where all of my games, or all of the stuff from my Space Invaders of the game, and there's quite a bit in there now, you'll notice that bullet, counter, enemy, all that stuff is in here, and I have an images folder. You have to have the pictures you're gonna use in the images folder. So you can see I have ship in there already, and I have alien A1, and you'll understand why I've named it that a little later, in there already. So when I click out of here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the hero, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to set image. And you will see I have ship and I have alien already here because they're in the right folder. Now if they're not there for you, the pictures that you've chosen, they're probably in the wrong folder, or it could be that they're not the right format, but you can also click here and go import and you can go and find the pictures on your computer wherever they may live and then Greenfoot will automatically put them into the images folder for you. Um, okay, so I'm doing hero, so I want the hero to be the ship. So I hit OK and now you can see the hero is now the ship. And I'm going to do the same thing with the enemy. I'm going to right click, set image, alien A1, and now you can see the enemy is that alien. Now they haven't changed here yet because I haven't hit reset. So I'm gonna hit reset now and it's not gonna look the way we want, but that's okay. Here we go. Okay, so everything's too big and that's because my images are fairly big, but I'm gonna do the scaling in my code. Okay, I'm not gonna go back into you know Photoshop or in my case preview and try to do it there. I'm gonna do it in here. So in the hero, the hero has an act method, and I've talked about this before in other videos, but the act method, it runs again and again and again and again, kind of infinitely as long as the game is being played. But I can also create what's called a constructor. And the way I do that is I type the word public, 
and then I mimic the exact name of the class, in this case, hero, and I put two brackets, and anything I put in here, in these two brackets, will happen as soon as the hero is created. And what I want to do is I want to take the image of the hero, and I want to scale it. And I want to make it a certain size. I'm not exactly sure what size I want to make this. Let's just try 30 wide by 20 high, and that could be wrong. Try 25, just kind of square. Well, I don't know. Let's try it and see what happens. So I'm going to now go back to my code, and you can see, hey, that looks pretty good actually. So it's scaled. Perfect. No problem. And what I can do now that I've done that for the hero is I can go back, copy that code, go to the enemy, and do the exact same thing. I'll change this to enemy. So this is the constructor for the enemy. And I want the enemies, I think, to be a little bigger. So maybe I'll go 40 and 30. I'm not sure if that'll work. Yeah, that's not too bad, actually. And so now my game works the exact same way. All I've done is replace the images. And that's why I was never worried about the images before, because I knew that replacing them is really not so difficult. And so you can see the game works the exact same way. Um, and now what I can do is I can get some more enemies. We can put different enemies on there. And I can really replace anything I like. Now while we're having all this fun putting images into our game, we can also put sound into our game quite easily. So when I went into my folder and took a look at all of the files that make up my game, we've looked at images, but the other folder here is sounds. Now if I double click, you'll see it's empty. And I happen to have a uh, sound file that's called pew. You can see it right here. And what it does is it makes the sound of um, kind of that old school Space Invaders sound of uh, shooting. So the enemy shoots a bullet and it makes a little pew sound. And what I want to do is I want to make it so my game makes that sound every time we shoot. So again, I have to think where does that happen. So that happens when I hit the space bar on the enemy, or the hero, sorry, the hero. And if I said the enemy earlier, sorry, I meant the hero. So uh, I double click on the hero. And that down here in the spacebar code, you can see here is where I shoot. So a new bullet appears, and then we restart the timer. So in here somewhere, it doesn't really matter where in here, but between these brackets, I'm going to put greenfoot dot control space, and I'll see there's a place sound. And what I want to do is I just want to use the place sound, and it says, what sound file do you want to play? This is the only part that can get a little tricky. Firstly, your sound has got to be in the sounds folder. And whatever you type, I am going to copy exactly that because it has to go right there. And it has to be enclosed by double quotes like that. And that's all you need. As long as the sound file is in the right folder, that should be all you need to make a sound. Now, I apologize if this is loud. Hopefully it won't be too loud, but let's see if it works. I'm going to run it. And you can hear there was a little lag the first time, but now I have sound. So just that easily, with the Greenfoot Play Sound method, it's very simple to add sounds to your game as well. So, in one... 10 minute session. We've gone from snakes to aliens. We've gone from a uh, walking man to a ship. We've got sounds. We've got pictures. It is coming together. So next lesson, we will learn how to put lots of different enemies on the screen.